Well, good morning, and I want to welcome you to our online broadcast. Uh, I really hope that you're doing well and that the Lord is blessing you. Uh, I know that I'm excited to hear from the Word of God this morning, and uh, we're trusting God to do great and mighty things uh, through this uh, situation uh, we're going through as a country. So let me just encourage you, uh, keep praying. Uh, keep praying for us as we pray for you, obviously. Uh, but do not neglect, uh, let me just encourage you, our leaders. Um, pray for our president. Uh, pray for uh, members of Congress. Uh, pray for our governor and our city officials. Um, they've got a lot of, of weight on their shoulders, a lot of decisions to make. Um, and I think it would be uh, wise for God's people to take about the ministry of prayer. Uh, while other ministries of the church are currently suspended. So I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're, you're hungry to hear from the Lord this morning. Uh, and if you are, let's take our Bibles and go to the book of Psalms, please. Psalms chapter number 90. Psalms 90. And we're going to be reading verses 9 through 12 this morning. Psalm 90, verse number 9. And the Word of God says... For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they may be, four, they be fourscore years, yet is their strength uh, labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Verse number 11. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So, catch this, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. If you want to mark in your Bible this morning, underline that first part of verse number 12. So teach us to number our days. You know, recently um, I watched a video of Muhammad Ali answering a question. And it was a pretty interesting video. Uh, I, can, I can post a link if you are interested in watching it. But the question was posed to Mr. Ali, Sir, what are you going to do after boxing? Now, Mr. Ali, at this point in his career, was in his 30s. Um, and he replied, when he was done with boxing, and this is, I believe, an exact quote, I'm going to get ready to meet God. And then he spent the rest of the video uh, talking about the brevity of life and talking about the certainty that he was going to meet God. And watching that video, it really kind of got me thinking a little bit about numbering my days. And, and I began to spend actual time breaking down how maybe I spent my life, how potentially uh, I will spend my life, and just a general idea of how we break down our lives. So we did some math, and I found out, let's say you live to be 75 years old, okay? In that time, the average person is going to spend 25 years sleeping, 10 years working, 1.6 years going to school, 1.3 years going to church. Isn't that interesting? 14 years on entertainment and hobbies, which only leaves you about 23 years available in those 75 years to do something for God. And then, I want to even make it more personal to me, so I wanted to figure out, let's say I lived to my 70s, how much time do I have left? So if I lived to be 75, roughly 40 years, I would spend, if everything remained on track, 13 years sleeping, 7.2 years working, 6.25 years on entertainment and hobbies, which only leaves me about 14 years not earmarked for something. You know, the Bible has a similar command in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 14. It says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Can I ask you this morning, how are you spending your vapor? May God help us to help, God, may God help us to understand the brevity, the shortness of our life and our remaining influence on this life. 
you know, Moses is, is the author of this. And he is under divine inspiration, we believe, writing this scripture. When he calls out to us to say, number your days. Right? Help us, God, to number our days. He calls us to really consider our own frailty. The brevity, the uncertainty of our lives. Number your days. You know, I've heard it said before that we can take our birth date and we can figure out how many days that we've actually lived. And I did that recently. And as of today, I've lived 13,331 days. It's pretty cool how you can figure that out. But you know what you can't figure out, my friends? Is you can't figure out the number of days that you have left. So, in that vein of thinking, we must let the brevity of our lives motivate us. Because our lives are fleeting. I think about, okay, so I've lived 13,000 days, right? Those days flew by. You know, I, I, we, today, uh, or not, recently, I got to celebrate some milestones. Um, and I got to look back and say it's been a certain number of years since, since I've not done this. A certain number of years since I've been married and since we've been engaged. And all of those milestone moments in my life have just passed by. And five, ten years have been a vapor. And many of you can look back on your lives and you can remember uh, being in high school and that was a long time ago, but it seems just like yesterday. So teach us to number our days. Consider the brevity of our life and what life we have left to use for the Lord. So God willing, just for a few minutes, I'm going to give you two points this morning as I preach a simple message on consider the brevity of life. Consider the brevity of life. Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to, to bless the, the preaching of his word this morning, and uh, then we'll begin. Let's pray together. Lord, I, I come to you again, and I ask for your help. God, without you, I can do nothing. Lord, I pray for those that are, are watching this, Father. I pray that you would touch their hearts. Lord, I pray that you would give us the wisdom that we need. Uh, and Lord, I pray that you would illuminate your word to help us understand and truly apply these things to our lives that we may be more like Christ and more of an influence and impact for Christ on this world. Father, we love you. We ask your power and your help this morning. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The first thing I want to talk to you about out of this text, I believe we can see the brevity of life and the lost person. The brevity of life and the lost person. When you go through verses 9 through 11, um, you know, we've said that Moses is the author of this psalm. So, you know, interesting fact, this makes this the oldest psalm that was written. Uh, and many people believe that when Moses wrote these verses under divine inspiration, this, in his, at the time of his life that this happened, was at the failure of Kadesh Barnea in Numbers chapter 14, when he was seeing dying men all around him in the wilderness. One author said, Moses lived among funerals and was overwhelmed at the results of God's pleasure, displeasure of sin. One person I was reading did the math about how many uh, how many people left uh, left uh, Israel? Excuse me, left Egypt, uh, and how long they were in the the wilderness? You know, 38, 40 years, right? And they figured that for that many people to die in that amount of time, the estimate is it would have to be roughly about 90 people a day are dying for so many million people to die in that 40 year stretch. Can you imagine? 90, roughly 90 funerals a day. That is what is saturating uh, Moses as he is writing this and crying out to God, seeing the, the dearth and the devastation because of man's own sin. Verse number 9 says, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. The idea, uh, and this is kind of interesting here, is that mankind's days seem to turn from them and are unwilling to remain with them. And, he says, we spend our years as a tale that is told. That word tale, I found out, means meditation of thought. So can I give you what Moses is saying here? 
He's saying in this idea that life passes away as rapidly as a thought. It has no permanency. Right? When we, you know, I can't tell you, um, you know, what I thought yesterday. Uh, it, thoughts come in and thoughts leave. You know, I, I got to thinking about this. Have you ever been speaking to somebody and, and they interrupt you as you're trying to, uh, you know, put, put an idea to words, right? And, and you forget what you were just talking about a moment ago? Can I tell you, just like your thoughts don't have long-lasting permanency, so too our 70 years or so on earth. Number your days. Consider the, the brevity of your days. One author said, and this is interesting, men's years fly by like a passing thought, and then they are quickly gone. So I honestly believe that Moses in these verses here is referring to these people of Israel in the wilderness when God swore in his wrath that they were not going to enter the promised land, but they were going to, they were going to wander and end up being consumed in that wilderness. You know, God was displeased, can I say it like this, with that unbelieving generation, and they lived out their days under his correction and displeasure. May I say... It is the very same thing with lost people, those without Christ. They wander the wilderness of this world, not entering into His rest, the Lord Jesus Christ, because of their unbelief. And may I say, they too face His wrath. It's, it's a picture here in these verses. They have a woeful life filled with sickness and loss. That is all that they are going to have. It is the only good thing that they will have. And may I say, that thing will quickly pass from them. And they have no hope without the Lord Jesus Christ. You think about it. If you live 70 years and you die without the Lord Jesus Christ and spend eternity in a devil's hell, your 70 years could have been filled with sickness, with loss, it could have been filled with, with, with tragedy, but compared to an eternity without God, those 70 years of loss and heartache are, are the times that you will look back to in eternity and say, those were the good years of my life. Think about that, that contrast, that, that tragic contrast. Verse number 10, the days of our years are threescore years and ten. The, the psalmist is really reflecting back on his life and seeing how short it is and how often it only really amounts to about 70 years if you're fortunate. And he says, and if by reason of strength, they be four score years. So if the person has an unusual, unusual health or strength about them, they might live 80 years, right? Yet, he says, is their strength labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away but as they're getting older past 70 and getting into their 80s that toil becomes really just a, a burden to them their bodies are becoming wearier and exhausted and then life is cut off and we fly away consider the brevity of your life may i say friends this outlook is not the christian outlook Yes, life to us is passing, but we have a promise, beloved, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life because we are in Christ. It doesn't mean that a Christian is exempted from trial and trouble or sorrows, but we have help and we have purpose in them. The lost, my friends, do not. Moreover, I believe this world is not our true home, and this body of death that we are in is going to be changed. And then in the twinkling of an eye, we are going to be caught up into His presence, because we are only pilgrims here, and we are soon off to our forever home. It's, you think about to a Christian perspective, in the scope of eternity, the only bad that we will ever experience is in the short brevity of life and for eternity the glory of God. Right? That is the Christian perspective versus the unsaved perspective. Verse number 11, who, who knoweth the power, 
of thine anger. He, so even, uh, even according to thy fear, he says, so is thy wrath in verse number 11. You know, the idea here is people just don't seem to understand the anger of God against the sons of man. Why? Because they don't let the fear of God influence their lives. That's why they don't care. May I say that your life without Christ is futile. Your life from God is futile. Not only, my friends, because it is brief, but because God's wrath is upon the lost man. Uh, one, one person said it like this, and I've repeated it often. Life is hard, but life is harder without the Lord. I've said this many times from the pulpit. When you, as a saved person, go to a funeral, and you know that the, the people uh, who, are, who are making up that funeral party are lost and they don't know the Lord. I, I've, I've said to myself and I've said to my wife before, I just don't understand how they can deal with a tragedy like this and not know the Lord. But that is the outlook of the lost. The only good that they will ever experience here without Christ is trouble and sorrow when compared to the horrors of hell. Friends, it is not, it, it, it is not a, a, a sweet thing to think about that a lost person has no hope without Christ and their life is short and they are, they are jumping, they are running headlong, full speed, toward a cliff that they will fall from and they will never recover from. May God help us to consider the brevity of life if you're lost. The number two, and I'm going to be wrapping up here. I want us to consider the brevity of life and the saved person. The brevity of life and the saved person. Look at verse number 12. He says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You know, Moses is writing this, as we said, in the midst of judgment on his nation. And he's asking God to teach men to live as dying men should live, always taking account of the brevity and uncertainty of life and the day that we shall spend in his presence. Why should we number our days? Verse 12 tells us that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. The idea behind that is, why should we consider that we are going to meet God shortly? Because if we let that thing uh, enrapture us and, and, and grip us, it will push us and give us a hearty desire to devote ourselves to the fear of God and to true piety. And may I say that is the beginning of wisdom, the fear of God. Psalm, 1, Psalm 111, verse number 10 is a great verse to look at as well. Men, I believe, have a tendency to think, and this is a great quote, men have a tendency to think everyone else is mortal but themselves. But we must live one day at a time and live each day to the fullest for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're saved, that should be our outlook. You know, uh, a dear man of God in my life is Dr. David Pittman, and we went to, we went to Northern Virginia to, to, to take William to to see Grandma, and uh, we, we got an opportunity to go to the church I grew up in. It was just a, a fantastic time. But in his Wednesday Bible message, he said something that I don't think I'll ever forget. And it was, it's, I don't want to say it's a mantra, but it, it's something that, is, that I'm trying to apply to my life. He said it like this, live each day for a full reward. Live each day for a full reward. When you get up in the morning, tell yourself, you know what? This whole day is going to be given to the Lord. I'm going to live each day with everything I have for Christ because if I were to meet Jesus today, I want to live today for full reward. That should be our attitude. When we consider the brevity of our life, and if we, if we make it to 70, if by unusual strength and health, praise the Lord, we're able to make it to 80 and 90 and so on and so on, that is still just... A breath of air that's here one moment, gone the next. It's a thought, right? And it stays and it's, it's gone in the next moment. Uh, it, 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 those are days, like the psalmist is telling us, that our days are constantly moving from us. We can't keep up with them. If we are going to stand before God, we must have a heart's desire to say, you know what? This life is short. I'm going to live it for Christ. Because I don't know if I'll have tomorrow, right? Boast not thyself of tomorrow, right? 
May I say, friends, that when we look at our life, we know that God daily loads us with benefits. We agree with that. But may I ask you something? What are we doing with those benefits that He loads us with? One author said, A short life should be wisely spent. A short life should be wisely spent. How have you spent your week? How did you spend yesterday? How are you spending your year thus far? Let me ask you a question. If you died in your sleep tonight, I, I hope to God that, that God gives you life and peace and health and you live to be 120 years old. But if God called you home tomorrow, would you be ashamed to stand in His presence? God, I didn't live for you. I'm sorry. God, I got focused on this world. I fell in love with the world. I felt I was more of a lover of pleasure than a lover of God. I was more of a man pleaser than, than, than someone who wanted to please Christ. My friends, number your days. You don't know if you'll, if you'll have tomorrow. So let me encourage you, live today 100% for the Lord. Well, I don't want to be seen as weird. You're not numbering your days. I don't, want to, I don't want to cause a ruckus and be that one who shares the gospel with everybody. You're not numbering your days. Well, well, Pastor, I'll get faithful in my Bible reading tomorrow. You're not numbering your days. Your life is short. You can be called home tomorrow. And hallelujah, the rapture could happen as we're watching this video even right now. But it, would you be ashamed at His appearing? Number your days. When we consider the brevity of our lives, friends, it should stir us for eternal things. When we look into the grave, which will be our bed, we, it should cool our sinful passions, and it should cause us to yield more of ourselves to our God. Are you growing? Are you giving more and more to the Lord each day? What things should we work on? What things can I challenge you to say, I want a full reward and from this day to the day I die. Can I give you a few things you know? But I think it's always good to be reminded of these things. I think we need to work on always being a witness for Christ. Every, uh, every, uh, every saved person that is watching this video, can I tell you, you are in the ministry of reconciliation. Per 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18. Can I apply that for you? You know, I, I, growing up in, 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 in youth group, I, I just remember the push for everybody to go to Bible college. And I remember if, if you just didn't want to go to Bible college, if you didn't want to be in the ministry full time, it was almost just like some people looked at you like you were a second class citizen. And, and I think we've kind of grown out of that as a, as, a, as, a, as a Christian culture, hallelujah, because, you know, as one, as, <laughs> as one preacher said, you know, uh, he, he, he was a preacher, his brother was a preacher, uh, and his, his younger brother was not a preacher. And they asked him, well, why didn't you join the ministry? Why didn't you go into the, into the ministry? And he said, well, somebody's got to be able to pay for all of them, right? <laughs> hallelujah, I, I'm, I'm glad for the people who, who are able to be faithful in church and, you know, they're not, uh, they're not leaving their jobs and, and and, and, and going somewhere to serve in a church, right? We, we, need, we need faithful laymen in our church. I want you to understand that. But here's the idea. All of us are in full-time ministry. Full-time. That means that you may not get up and preach behind a pulpit on Sunday morning. You may not even teach a Sunday school class. But can I tell you, God has called every Christian to the ministry of reconciliation. That means bringing people to a reconciling relationship Bringing them to Christ. Bringing them to the reconciler in Jesus Christ. We should be sharing our faith and sharing the gospel. Number two, I think we need to, we need to be challenged to be faithful to our church. Uh, Hebrews 10.25, you know this verse. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. May I say the return of Christ is soon at hand. We must be involved. We must be in faith. We must be faithful to our church. Not just be Sunday Christians. Not just be Christians when it's convenient for us or when we need when we need the Lord. That's when we'll come to church. That, that should not be our attitude. Some people think that church is just a social club. What can the church do for me? But my friends, this church is not a social club. It is a training ground to attack the gates of hell. You want to live your life for the fullest for Christ? 
then give your heart for the things that the Lord loves. And can I tell you, the Lord loves His church. The Lord loves His church. We should see church as important. We should not neglect our responsibilities in it. We, you know, I think that we make time for the things that we love. Amen? Church should be a want to for us as well. Church sometimes should be an excuse for us not to do things. I can't. I've got church. But it seems uh, skewed and flipped in our society. God help us. I think next we should be sold out to our God. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I, I encourage you to read those verses. You know, we have an obligation, my friends, to live a holy life. So I think it's important for us to ask ourselves when we're doing inventory to say, is there anything in my life that hurts my testimony? Is there anything in my life that sullies the name of God? Is there anything in my life that someone can look at and it is an appearance of evil? Well, people will say, I thought you were a Christian, right? If there's anything in our lives that's not well-pleasing to Christ, let me encourage you, if you want to number your days and let, those, let, let the brevity of life push you to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, cast those things out and serve Him and live for Him with a godly testimony. I think another application is we should be loving the family of God. That's John 15, verses number 12 through 17. John 15, 12 through 17. Can I encourage you that this is a direct command of the Lord Jesus Christ to love one another. Now, can I tell you a temptation that, that I think a lot of people struggle with? I think that we are tempted to put up with one another. And then we go home and we say, I love the Lord. Can I give you something hard? But as we get closer to the Lord in our Christian walk, we begin to love the things that He loves. God loves His people. God loves His church. And the closer we are, we are to Him, we are going to develop the same type of affections. You know, I've heard preachers say, you know, and, and this is a probably famous example. You've heard maybe a different uh, phrasing or explaining of this. But there was a, a man who, who really struggled with, with a particular member in their church. And the member in their church was just chomping on them, just, just chewing on them. just did, You know what I mean? They were just mean as a snake to this preacher. And this preacher was praying. He said, God, I can't love this person. They're, they're just mean as a snake. God, I, they'll undercut you if you don't look. God, I can't love this person. And it's almost like the Spirit of God got a, got a hold of his heart. And he said, God, I can't love this person, but I can let you love that person through me. God, help us to live each day full, to the fullest and count our days. You know what? It should, be, it should be a challenge to God's people to say, you know what? I, wanna, I, I don't have much time, I'm probably sure. I don't know when God will call me home. It could be 40 years. I hope, I hope, for, I hope for a lot of us it's 100 years, amen, <laughs> or the rapture today, amen. But I, I hope that a lot of us are living a long time. But it should be really impactful for us to say, you know, I could go home tomorrow, but you know what I can do today? If I go home tomorrow, I want today to be known as a day that I love that person and I prayed for that person, I kept the Lord's command. And tomorrow, God willing, help me, I want to do it again. And I want to live each day for a full reward. And when I get to heaven, you know what? I, I want to have a life full of full rewards. Amen. That, that's the idea behind it. Let it motivate you. Lastly, I think we need to be, uh, we need to be very, very, uh, we need to work very hard. Let me say it like this. On maintaining a daily quiet time with God. That's Psalm 104, verse number 34. Psalm 119 and 97, Mark 12, 30. You know, I think all of our prayer, all of our failures in this life mount up really just to being failures to pray. All of our failures are prayer failures, I believe. How many times have we tried to tackle things in this world without being empowered by the Spirit of God? That happens, I think, a lot of times. And how many times, contrawise, if we have, we have attacked something that we are not able to do and then we're, we spend time in prayer and Bible reading and, and just worshiping and praising the Lord and giving Him these things and we're controlled by God and His power. How many times have we been successful in prayer? May, may God impress this upon us. I may not have tomorrow. Today is going to be a day of prayer. Today I'm going to be faithful. Today I'm going to honor the Lord. And I'm going to honor the Lord until He takes me home. Number your days, my friends. Number your days. 
take time every day to worship Him, to praise Him. We must take time to dwell at the throne of grace. Hebrews 4, 16. Number your days. Consider the brevity of life. Let me ask you a question. As we're closing. If Jesus Christ were to break forth out of the eastern sky, the trump of God sounding, right? Dead in Christ rising. Then we which are alive and remain are caught up together to be in the clouds of the Lord forever in a twinkling of an eye. You know, I believe that after the rapture, that there is not only a marriage supper of the Lamb of Celebration, but you know what I believe? There is a, there is a judgment for Christians. Not a judgment of sin, not to send people to hell. It's the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema seat. We, we discussed this before out of Corinthians. It's a judgment of works. And it's a reward for works. If we were to stand, if God were to call us home, and immediately we were standing before the judgment seat of Christ for rewards. And we were thinking back to our lives and how we lived it. Would most of our life be lived for self, for Satan, for this world? Or would our lives be counted and tallied up and would it be equaled out to show a life of faithfulness? Friends, we must number our days. We are living in a very short amount of time before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. He could come back right now. Hallelujah. I wish he would. What are you doing with the life that God has given to you? You don't have very much of it left. None of us do, my friends. Seventy years isn't much when you look at eternity. We don't have very much time. Number your days. And may I say, let that push you to serve God for a full reward every day. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. God, thank you for your precious word. Lord, thank you for the reminders about the brevity of life. Father, help us to consider the short time that we have here and let it consume us to serve you with every minute, with every hour, with every ounce of strength that you have given us. Lord, let us use that to make an offering of our lives to thee. We love you. Please help us. Lord, if there's anyone here who's watching this, or they do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, Father, would you draw them even now? Lord, help, help them to, to have faith enough to contact us so that we can show them how to be saved and to leave this broadcast knowing they are on their way to heaven and that their sins are forgiven and that their outlook on life can finally change. We love you. Please bless us and help us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so, so much. I, uh, I'm praying for you. I love you. And we'll see you tonight. God bless. Hi, this is Pastor Ryan. I want to thank you for taking time to watch our video today. And I hope it was a blessing to you. Uh, if you have any particular spiritual questions we can answer or anything we can pray for you about, feel free to contact us. We'd love to try to be a blessing to you. But remember, most importantly, uh, if you're not sure heaven's your home, if, if you died today, you're not 100% sure you'd go to heaven, uh, please contact us. We'd like to take the Bible and show you how you can know from Scripture uh, that Christ is yours and that heaven is your eternal home and your sins are forgiven. Thank you so much, and God bless you.